G'day, and welcome to the AOS Coach sneak peek into the 2023 Ossiarch Bone Reapers Battle Tome. With relentless discipline, you've waited for updated rules, so in this video, I will harvest your allegiance abilities, enhancements, key war scroll changes, match play rules, and points. Games Workshop did send me this book in advance at no cost, but they'll have no editorial involvement in the video. You'll also find this book is chock full of art, narrative gems, path to glory, as well as a unique code for your book to be unlocked in the AOS app. Let's start at the Allegiance level, and you have six Ossiarch Legion sub-factions in the Mortis Praetorian, Petrifex Elite, Staliac Lords, Ivory Host, Null Myriad, and Crematorians. Now I'll show you the rules a little bit later in this video. You have lost the two White Dwarf heroic actions in Relentless Leadership and Necromatic Mastery, as well as a Relentless Discipline mechanic. Congratulations, you can now use the normal command abilities. You've kept ranks unbroken by descent, and that is do not take Battleshock test for friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers units. You've also kept Deathless Warriors, and that is friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers units have a ward of 6+. Natterite Weapons has moved off the War Scroll and into the Allegiance abilities. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a melee weapon by friend Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit is a 6, that attack scores two hits on the target instead of one. Now make a wound roll and a save roll for each hit. This ability has no effects on attacks made by mounts unless noted otherwise. Now the change with Relentless Discipline. If you command a Ossiarch Bone Reaper's army, when you receive your starting command points, you receive extra command points as follows, and it's worth noting that these command points are cumulative. You receive one command point when there are three or more friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers units on the battlefield. You receive an extra one if there are five or more Ossiarch Bone Reaper units on the battlefield. And then you receive an extra one if there are seven or more friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper units on the battlefield. So with all these extra command points, what can you do with them? Well, strap yourself into story time with Coach because there has been a replacement to your former Relentless Discipline points and you now have Ossiarch Commands. If you command an Ossiarch Bone Reapers army, you can use the Ossiarch Commands in addition to any other command abilities that you can use. Ossiarch Commands are command abilities that will either appear on a war scroll for a unit that has an Ossiarch Bone Reaper keyword or on the table below. In addition, the restrictions that you cannot use the same command ability more than once in the phase doesn't apply with Ossiarch commands. It's worth calling out that you can use the same Ossiarch command more than once in the same phase, as long as that command is being issued by a model that has not yet already issued a command in that phase, and it's also being received by a unit that has not already received a command in that phase. So you can't stack two commands on the same unit, nor can one hero issue two commands at the same time in the same phase, but you could issue these multiple times using different heroes. So what are these Ossiarch commands? Well, there are seven of them. Reform ranks, you can use this command ability in your movement phase. The unit that receives the command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit, and that unit can retreat in that phase and still charge later in the turn. Unstoppable Advance, you can use this command ability in your movement phase when you pick a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit to make a normal move. Now you get to add 3 inches to that unit's movement characteristic until the end of that phase. Reckonic Construct, you can use this command ability at the end of your movement phase. The unit that receives the command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit that is more than 3 inches from all enemy units, so not in combat. You can heal up to D3 wounds allocated to that unit, or if no wounds are allocated to it, you can return a number of slain models to that unit that has a combined wounds characteristic of the D3 or less. Counter Strike, you can use this command ability in the enemy charge phase after an enemy unit has finished a charge move. The unit that receives must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit that is within 3 inches of an enemy unit that made a charge move in the same turn and is more than 3 inches from all other enemy units. Add 1 to the wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by that unit in the following combat phase. 
Impenetrable ranks. You can use this command ability when a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit is picked as the target for an attack. Now that unit must receive this command. Until the end of that phase, you can add one to the ward rolls for that unit for the purpose of Deathless Warrior's command trait, which is that six up Allegiance ward save. With Bludgeon, you can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. The unit that receives the command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit, and you can improve the Ren characteristic of that unit's melee weapons by one until the end of that phase. And then finally, Unflinching Coordination. You can use this command ability in the combat phase after a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers hero has fought for the first time in that phase. The unit that receives the command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit that has not yet fought in that combat phase, that is within 3 inches of an enemy unit, and that is wholly within 12 inches of that friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers hero. Now that unit can fight immediately. There are 5 command traits to choose from for your Ossiarch Bone Reapers general. Dark Acolyte is for wizards only. In your hero phase, if the first spell this general attempts to cast in that phase is successfully cast, that spell cannot be unbound. Show of superiority, while this general is on the battlefield, roll a dice before your opponent spends any command points to use a command ability. On a 5+, plus, your opponent must spend 2 command points to issue their command instead of 1. With Mighty Archeoshin, ignore negative modifiers to save rolls for attacks that target this general. Crafted by Beast Bone, after this general has fought for the first time, at the start of each battle round, add 1 to the attack characteristic of this general's weapons for the rest of the battle. This effect is cumulative. Finally, Aura of Sterility. Subtract 1 from hit rolls and wound rolls for attacks with missile weapons that target friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper units wholly within 12 inches of the general. My favorite command traits would either be Dark Acolyte for a Wizard General to basically get a guaranteed spell off each turn as long as it was successfully rolled, or Show of Superiority which could limit the amount of command points used by your opponent's general and force them to make some quite tough decisions where they want to spend those command points. There are also 8 artifacts with 4 general ones for your Ossiarch Bone Reaper heroes and another 4 for your Mortisons. Relics of the Empire are for your Ossiarch Bone Reaper heroes only. Lot of Saturation adds 1 to the ward roll for the bearer. Marrow Pact each time the bearer fights, after all of their attacks have been resolved, you can heal a number of wounds allocated to the bearer equal to the number of wounds or mortal wounds caused by those attacks that were allocated to an enemy unit. Mind Blade picks one of the bearer's melee weapons. At the end of the combat phase, if any wounds or mortal wounds caused by attacks made by that weapon were allocated to an enemy hero in that phase and that hero was not slain, that hero cannot carry out a heroic action for the rest of the battle. Finally, with Helm of Tyranny, enemy units cannot receive the Inspiring Presence command while they're within 3 inches of the bearer. Now, in addition, if an enemy unit fails a Battleshock test within 3 inches of the bearer, add D3 to the number of models that flee. Treasures of the Mortisons are for your Mortisons only. The Lumen Scythe is for Soul Reapers only. Subtract 1 from hit rolls and wound rolls for attacks that target the bearer while they're within 3 inches of any enemy units. The Artisan Key is for Bone Shapers only. Before you use the bearer's Bone Shaper ability, roll a dice. On a 3+, plus, you can either pick 2 units within 6 inches of the bearer to be affected by the Bone Shaper's abilities instead of 1, or you can pick 1 unit within 6 inches of the bearer to be affected by the Bone Shaper ability twice. Bones of the Abyss is for Soul Masons only. Each time the bearer successfully casts a spell that is not unbound, add 1 to the attack characteristic of the bearer's ossified claws until the end of that turn. The Gothasar Cartouch is for Oss Effectors only, our brand new unit. Now you get to add 1 to the wound rolls for attacks made by melee weapons by friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper units that are wholly within 9 inches of the bearer. My favourites would be the Lot of Saturation if you need a survivable general with a plus one to the ward rolls. 
Helm of Tyranny will make a more offensive general shut down those inspiring presents and make extra models flee. Or the Gothazar Cartouch if you're taking the new Os Effector for that plus one to wound in combat while they're wholly within nine inches. There is one spell lore available for your Ossiarch Bone Reaper wizards, including your unique wizards. Empower Natterite Weapons is a spell with a casting value of 5 and a range of 24. If successfully cast, pick one friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit, wholly within range and visible to the caster. Until the start of your next hero phase, the Natterite Weapon battle trait triggers on an unmodified hit roll of a 5+, plus instead of a 6 for that unit. Protection of Nagash is a spell with a casting value of 6. If successfully cast at the end of any phase, if any wounds or mortal wounds were allocated to the caster in that phase for an attack made with a melee weapon and the caster was not slain, remove them from the battlefield and set them up again on the battlefield more than 9 inches from all enemy units. Now after setting up the caster, this spell is unbound. Reinforced Constructs is a spell with a casting value of 5 and a range of 18. If successfully cast, pick one friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit, wholly within range and visible to the caster. Until your next hero phase, that unit has a ward of 4 plus against mortal wounds. Drain Vitality is a spell with a casting value of 6 and a range of 18. If successfully cast, pick one enemy unit within range and visible to the caster. Until your next hero phase, subtract 1 from hit rolls for attacks made by that unit and subtract 1 from save rolls for attacks that target that unit. Mortal Contract is a spell with a casting value of 7 and a range of 18. If successfully cast, pick 1 enemy unit within range and visible to the caster. For the rest of the battle, roll a dice at the end of each phase in which any attacks made by that unit inflicted any damage on a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit. On a 3+, plus, that enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. You cannot pick the same enemy unit to be affected by this spell more than once per battle. Finally, Soul Release is a spell with a casting value of 5. If successfully cast until your next hero phase, enemy reserve units and enemy summon units cannot be set up within 12 inches of the caster. The range of this spell must be measured from the caster, even if an ability would allow you to measure it from somewhere else. For example, this would override the Lord Imperiton in the Stormcast Eternals that would let you bring on a Stormcast unit outside of 7 as opposed to outside of 9. Instead, you're now forcing them all back to be outside of 12. Empower Natterite Weapons, I think, will continue to remain a popular spell for those extra attacks. Mortal Contract is a great spell if you have any enemy units that are interacting in multiple phases in the game. A hero monster, for example, would be a great target. Drain Vitality is essentially another point of rend, and others are situational depending on the units that you think you're going to be playing against and how you might build your army list. I previously mentioned you have six sub-factions to choose from through your Ossiarch Legions. Mortis Praetorian, once per battle during the enemy charge phase, after an enemy unit finishes a charge move, you can pick one friendly Mortis Praetorian unit within 12 inches of that unit and more than 3 inches of all enemy units. Now that unit can attempt to charge. So this is essentially a counter charge if you're not already locked in combat with the unit that you want to counter charge. With Petrifix Elite, subtract 1 from the damage inflicted to a minimum of 1 for each successful attack that targets a friendly Petrifix Elite Hecatos or Petrifix Elite Gothazar Harvester Unit. Staliac Lords lets you reroll charge rolls for friendly Staliac Lord units that have a mount. With Null Myriad, you can roll a dice each time a friendly Null Myriad unit wholly within 12 inches of any friendly Null Myriad Mortison or friendly Arcan is affected by a spell cast by an enemy unit or the abilities of an endless spell summoned by an enemy unit. On a 2+, plus, ignore the effects of that spell or the effects of that endless spell on that unit. Crematorians, each time a friendly crematorian unit is slain, before removing the model from play, you can pick one enemy unit within 3 inches of it and roll a number of dice equal to the wounds characteristic of that model. For each 5+, plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. 
Finally, with the Ivory Host, add one to the number of hits scored by the Natterite Weapons Battle Trait for friendly Ivory Host units. If the unmodified hit roll was 6, and any wounds or mortal wounds were allocated to that unit earlier in the turn. It's worth calling out that if this unit is affected by this ability and the Empower Natterite Weapon spell, the effects of this ability is only applied on the unmodified hit rolls of 6, not on the 5+. As expected, you have Grand Strategies, Battle Tactics, and a Core Battalion for match play. Your Grand Strategies are the Scales Balanced, a Textbook Conquest, Creation and Termination, and the Pride of Oasis. The Scales Balance, when the battle ends, you complete the Grand Strategy if any friendly Mortec Guard or Kavalos Death Rider units from your starting army have the same number of models as they had at the start of the battle. A textbook conquest, when the battle ends, you complete the grand strategy if you control all the objectives on the battlefield. Creation and termination, when the battle ends, you complete this grand strategy if there are more friendly Mortison units than enemy heroes on the battlefield. With the Pride of Oasis, when the battle ends, you complete the grand strategy if you've completed at least four battle tactics, and every battle tactic you completed was from the Ossiarch Bone Reapers list that I'll show you in a minute. Now, if I'm picking one from this list, it's probably Scales Balance, but none of these really stand out to me as easy achieves or actually quite impress me at all. I'm probably more likely currently to go to the General's Handbook, but if I had to pick one from there, it's probably the Scales Balance, although maybe Textbook Conquest. Speaking of those battle tactics, you have Trample the Defiant, the Sculptor's Entourage, Morseless Bombardment, the Tithe Demand, the Edge of Obliteration, and Unfeeling Recursion. Trample the Defiant, pick one friendly Kavalos Death Rider unit that is more than 3 inches of all enemy units. You complete the tactic if that unit made a charge move in this turn and is within 3 inches of any enemy units at the end of this turn. The Sculptor's Entourage, you complete the tactic at the end of the turn if a friendly Immortus Guard unit and a friendly Mortison are contesting the same objective wholly outside of your territory. Remorseless Bombardment, pick one enemy unit on the battlefield. You complete this tactic if that enemy unit is destroyed during this turn by attacks made by a friendly Mortec Crawler unit. The Tithe Demands, pick one enemy hero or monster on the battlefield. You complete this tactic if that unit is destroyed during this turn by an attack made by a friendly Gothasar Harvester. The Edge of Obliteration, you complete the tactic if two or more Necropolis Stalker units are wholly within enemy territory and more than 9 inches from all enemy units at the end of this turn. Finally, with Unfeeling Recursion, you complete this tactic if there are three or more friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper units on the battlefield that had models returned to them in this turn using the Recknet Construct command ability and did not have any models slain in this turn. Finally, there is a match play battalion for you to use, and that is the Ossiarch Cohort. It's mandatory that you take one commander as well as two units that are not a leader, a behemoth, or an artillery. And you do have the optional choices of including up to two sub-commanders, up to three troops, two artillery, and two behemoth. If you take the Ossiar Cohort, the benefit is going to be unified for you to include this as a one-drop. However, there is a rule that's quite interesting, actually, and that is at the end of the deployment, each unit from this battalion must be set up within six inches of two or more units in the same battalion. I can see this battalion being a popular option as it gives you plenty of flexibility with the units that you choose to either build a pure one drop or potentially to combine it with a battle regiment to bring it down to maybe a two drop. Now it depends again on how you're building your list. Let's look at all your war scroll changes now and we'll start off with your faction terrain, the Bone Tithe Nexus. There's a bunch of changes in the abilities that you can trigger off the Bone Tithe Nexus. The Punishment of Agony is pick one enemy unit within 18 inches of the terrain feature and visible to it and roll a dice. Add one to the roll if any enemy models were slain within 12 inches of the terrain feature in the previous turn, and on a 4+, plus, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by that unit until your next hero phase. 
So you have gained the ability to bring this down to a three if an enemy model is slain within 12 inches in the last turn. Punishment of death, pick one enemy unit within 18 inches of the terrain feature and visible to it and roll a dice. Add one to the roll if any enemy models were slain within 12 inches of the terrain feature in the previous turn. On a 4 plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Again, it's gained the ability to bring down the dice roll, but it used to be a 2 plus, but it used to only do one mortal wound. So I guess now you can do D3. Just don't roll a 1 or a 2 and you're better off. Punishment of Ignorance, pick one enemy wizard or priest within 18 inches of the terrain feature and visible to it and roll a dice. Add one to the rolls if any enemy models were slain within 12 inches of this terrain feature in the previous turn. On a 4+, plus, subtract one from casting rolls or chanting rolls for that unit until your next hero phase. Previously, it had a 36-inch range. It used to impact your casting, dispelling, and unbinding for an enemy, but it never impacted priests. Punishment of Lethargy also changed, and pick one enemy unit within 18 inches of the terrain feature and visible to it, and roll a dice. Add one to the roll if any enemy models were slain within 12 inches of the terrain feature in the previous turn. On a 4+, plus, that unit cannot run until your next hero phase, in addition, subtract 3 from the charging roll for that unit until your next hero phase. Now, it used to only allow you to roll 1d6 when that unit tried to make a charge move, so it will make medium charges quite hard to achieve, and a 3-inch charge almost a 50% success rate, or it may require a command point to get in on the charge. Also, and very impactfully, it has gained the impassable keyword. Next up is the Bone Daddy himself, Nagash, the Supreme Lord of the Undead. There's been plenty of changes on Nagash. The move is now asterisk tied against the damage table. It used to start at 9. The save is still 3 plus. The bravery is still 10. And he has 18 wounds. He's gained an extra 2 wounds. He has lost the gaze of Nagash, which was a shooting attack. And there has been a couple of changes in the melee profile. Alakanash is the same. Zephtar Nabta is a 2 inch range, 4 attacks, hits on 3s, wounds on 3s, rend 2 for 3 damage. Now this attack used to be tied to the damage table and would start at a 6, uh, and it used to wound on a 4, but the rest is the same. And there's been a slight change to the spectral claws on daggers, it used to hit on 3s, uh, it now hits on 4s. Speaking of the damage table, it has been changed, uh, the, the damage table is now 0 to 9, 10 to 12, 13 to 15, and 16 plus. That's, that's going to affect a couple of things. I already mentioned the move, which will go from 10 to 9 to 8 to 7. The nine books of Nagash will start at eight spells if you are on 0 to 9. It'll then go down to 6, it'll go down to 5, and then go down to 4. The other thing that's tied to the damage table is the invocation of Nagash. It starts at 24 inches when it's unwounded, or I guess up to 9 wounds suffered. It then goes to 18, it then goes to 12 inch range, and then finally it goes to 9. It's worth calling out that the Staff of Power is no longer tied to the damage table. That's the boost to casting, dispelling, and unbinding. It has moved to an ability on the War Scrolls. So it's just not going to degrade as you take damage. To no surprise, Nagash is a wizard, and the number of spells Nagash can cast in your hero phase is determined by the nine books of Nagash that's in the damage table. This unit can also attempt to unbind any number of spells in the enemy hero phase, and if this unit is included in a Nighthorn, a Flesh Eater Quartz, an Ossiarch Bone Reapers, or a Soulblight Gravelord's Army, it knows all the spells from the spell law in that faction's allegiance in addition to any spells that it knows. Nagash is a War Master and can be included in Nighthaunt, Flesh Eater Courts, Ossiag Bone Reapers, or Soulblight Gravelord armies. It's treated as a general, even if it's not the model picked to be the army's general. In addition, you can still use the army's allegiance abilities, even though this unit is not from the army faction. However, it's not going to benefit from them. Alakanash, the Staff of Power, is going to add 3 to the casting, dispelling, and unbinding roles for this unit. 
Invocation of Nagash at the start of your hero phase for each friendly summonable Mordant or Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit that is wholly within range of this unit. We talked about it earlier in the damage table. You can heal either three wounds allocated to that unit, or if no wounds have been allocated to that unit, you can return a number of slain models to it that has a combined wounds characteristic of three or less. You're going to love this rule. Mordekane gives friendly death units wholly within 12 inches of this unit a ward of 5 plus. Hooray, Nagash has a ward. Supreme Lord of the Undead. At the start of your hero phase, you can pick one friendly summonable Mortant or Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit with a wounds characteristic of 3 or less that has been destroyed and roll a dice. On a 3 plus, a replacement unit with half of the models in that unit that was destroyed, rounding up is added to your army. Replacement units must be set up wholly within 12 inches of Nagash and more than 9 inches from all enemy units. Units set up in this way cannot move in the following movement phase. Each destroyed unit can only be replaced once. Replacement units themselves cannot be replaced again. I mentioned earlier the 9 books of Nagash will tell you how many spell casts, so 8, 6, 5, or 4. Then there are two spells on the War Scroll, Hand of Dust and Soul Stealer. Hand of Dust is a spell with a casting value of 8 and a range of 3. If successfully cast, pick one enemy model within range and visible to the caster. Then take a dice and hide it in one of your hands or under one of two appropriate containers. If your opponent picks the hand holding the dice, the spell has no effect. If they pick the hand or the container that is empty, then the enemy model is slain. The other spell, Soul Stealer, is a spell with the casting value of 7 and a range of 24. If successfully cast, pick one enemy unit within range and visible to the caster. That unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If the unmodified casting roll for this spell is a 9+, plus, and this spell is not unbound, the enemy unit suffers D6 mortal wounds instead of the D3. Now you can also heal up to one wound that has been allocated to the caster for each mortal wound caused by this spell that was not negated. Now Nagash's keywords is death, hero, monster, wizard, and Nagash. Next up is Special K, Catacross himself. There's been a whole bunch of changes on this thick war scroll. The damage table has changed 0 to 9, 10 to 12, 13 to 15, and 16 plus. The Shield of Mortis damage table is now 1, 2, 3, and 4. Previously, this only came in when Catacross had suffered 13 or more wounds. The Natterite Dagger, the Natterite Dueling Blades, the Soul Reaver Great Blade, and the Spirit Dagger have all merged as a profile, now to be called the Retinue Blades. It's 1 inch range, uh, either 10, 9, 8, or 7 attacks. It's tied to the damage table. Uh, 3 plus to hit, 3 plus to wound, rend 1 for 1 damage. The companions are no longer tied to the damage table, so you're not going to be removing them as he takes damage. Catacross is a war master when he is in Mortis Praetorian. Previously, that would be across the entire OBR, now just Mortis Praetorian. There's been a change in the Mortark of Necropolis ability. In your hero phase, you can pick up to three different friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper units, wholly within 24 inches of this unit. If that unit is not an Immortus Guard or Necropolis Stalker unit, you can heal up to three wounds allocated to that unit, or if no wounds have been allocated to that unit, you can return a number of slain models to it with a combined wounds characteristic of three or less. But if it is an Immortus Guard or a Necropolis Stalker unit, you can heal up to three wounds allocated to the unit, or if no wounds have been allocated, roll a dice. On a 3+, plus, you return one slain model to that unit. There's been a change to Endless Duty. You can use this command ability in your hero phase. The unit that receives the command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit. Until your next hero phase, add one to the attack characteristic of that unit's melee weapons, now it used to be issued in the shooting phase or the combat phase, now you're issuing it in the hero phase. There's been a change to the Supreme Lord of the Bone Reaper Legions. You can use this command ability in your hero phase if this unit is more than 3 inches from all enemy units. This unit must receive the command and until your next hero phase, add 1 to the hit rolls for attacks made by friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper units 
wholly within 24 inches of this unit, and add one to the save rolls for attacks that target friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper units wholly within 24 inches of this unit. Now, the range has increased to 24 inches. It used to be 18, and the plus one save used to only be for Mortis Praetorians. There's another change in the Aviarch Spy Master, and that's now on a roll of a 5+. plus. It used to be a 4+, plus to stop enemy units receiving a command point. There's been a change in Prime Necrophorus. Once per turn, this unit can issue a command to a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit anywhere on the battlefield without using a command point. This used to just double the range of Supreme Lord of the Bone Reaper Legion to be a 36-inch range. It did lose Deadly Combination, which we used to trigger two mortal wounds on a hit roll of a 6 using the Shield of Mortis. It has gained a rule called Do Nothing, This One Is Mine. Now you'll use the bottom row of this unit's damage table while it's within 3 inches of an enemy unit. So this is going to give you more attacks on the Kinder Cart and the Shield of Mortis, but less attacks on the Retinue Blade, and you'll see that this is actually a good thing. Arcan the Black has had a save improvement. It's now a save of 3 plus and 14 wounds. So it used to be a 4 up and you've gained 3 wounds actually on Arcan the Black. Zephyr Car is now a 4 plus 2 wound and does 2 damage. It used to be a 3 up and do D3 damage. Kanashan is a 2 damage. It used to be D3. The Spectral Claws are now 4 plus to hit. It used to be on 5 plus. The damage table 2 has changed. It's now 0 to 7, 8 to 9, 10 to 11, and 12 plus. You'll still be sitting on the plus 2 to casting, unbinding, and dispelling a little longer. And he'll always have plus 1 to those rolls, regardless of how much he's been wounded. Fester of Souls, each time this unit fights, after all the attacks have been resolved, you can heal up to a number of wounds allocated to this unit, equal to the number of wounds or mortal wounds caused by those attacks that were allocated to an enemy unit to a maximum of six. Now, this used to only heal up to two. Now you can heal up to six, which is great considering he's also gained an extra three wounds. First of the Mortark no longer costs you a command point, which still extends the range of spells by Death Wizards by six if they're wholly within 18 inches of Arcan the Black. Mortark of Sacrament is the same rule on Catacross, the Mortark of the Necropolis, which is pick three different units and heal them three wounds or bring back three wounds worth of models unless it's a guard or a stalker in which you'd have to roll three plus to bring back a model. It did lose the Frightful Touch, which was mortal wounds on sixes with the Spectral Claws. You will notice anyone who had Frightful Touch has probably lost it. Archcavalos Xantos has had a couple of changes. It's now a base move of 10. It used to be 12. Dark Lance is 5 attacks and Ren minus 1. It used to only have 3 attacks. Unstoppable Charge now deals mortal wounds on a 5+. plus. Now you still roll a number of dice equal to the charge roll and still gives you the extra 3 inch pile in. There's been a change in Still Their Breath. You can use his command ability in the combat phase. This unit must receive the command, and until your next hero phase, add one to the wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by friendly Mortis Praetorian units while they're wholly within 12 inches of this unit. It did lose the Natterite Battle Shield melee profile, and a lot of units lost this, and this was average at best anyway, so you're not going to cry over that one. Uh, you also lost Hatred of the Living, and you also lost Endless Duty on Xantos. It did gain the War Master ability, and it's a War Master when you're in Mortis Praetorian. It did also gain a rule called the Will of the Legions. Now, once per turn, this unit can issue a command to a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit without a command point being spent. Vokmortarian has had a save improvement. It's now a save of 4+. Plus. It used to be 5+. Plus. The Gaze of Death and the Staff of Retribution now do a flat damage of 2. It used to be a D3. The Contract of Nagash at the start of the combat phase, pick one enemy unit within 3 inches of this unit and roll a dice. On a 3+, plus, your opponent must spend a command point to pick this unit to be a target for an attack made by an enemy unit in that phase. Now this used to be a 5+, plus. the unit could not be picked as a target, and now it's going to cost your opponent a resource. 
Grim Warnings has changed and it's subtract two from the bravery characteristic of enemy units while they're within 12 inches of this unit. If the model picked to be the enemy general has been slain, subtract three from the bravery characteristic of those units instead of a two. The bravery debuff has gotten better, but you've lost the ability to debuff an enemy unit's unbinding rolls. There's a change in Mortal Touch. It's a spell with a casting value of seven and a range of one. If successfully cast, pick one enemy model within range and visible to the caster and roll a dice. On a 4+, plus, that model is slain, and the range of this spell cannot be modified and must be measured from the caster, even if there is an ability that would allow you to measure from somewhere else. So no using Arcan to extend the range for 6 inches, probably no Umbral Spell Portal. It's gambling at its finest. The casting value has gone down slightly, and it is easier to slay the model, but it is within one inch. It's also gained the ability to know the entire Ossiarch Bone Reaper spell lore, which is quite nice. The Leash Kavalos' Commander Blade is now 5 attacks, so it's gained an extra 2 attacks. Unstoppable Charge is the same as the Arch Kavalos Xantos' one we just spoke about. Endless Duty has changed, and you can use his command ability in your hero phase. The unit that receives the command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit. Until your next hero phase, add one to the attack characteristic of that unit's melee weapons. It's now in the hero phase rather than in the shooting phase. It too lost the Naderite Battle Shield, and it did gain the Will of the Legions, where once per turn, this unit can issue a command to a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit without a command point being spent. The Kavalos Death Rider move has reduced. It's now a move of 10. Uh, Naderite Spears is a 4 plus to hit and a rend minus 1. Death Rider Wedge, you can use his command ability in the charge phase. The command can only be issued by this unit's Mortec Hecatos, and this unit must receive the command. Until the end of that phase, models in that unit can pass across other models with a wounds characteristic of 3 or less in the same manner as if the model could fly. Now this used to do a couple of mortal wounds on the charge and give you an extra 3 inch pile in, but you didn't technically lose that because you gained a new rule called Unstoppable Charge. It's the same one that we spoke about with Arch Kavalos Xantos, so you still get the 3 inch pile in, you still get the mortal wounds on the charge, it's just separated as a different ability. You also lost the Naderite weapons on the War Scroll, but why I'm calling this out is because you don't get the bonus on a 5+, plus if you charge like it was on the old War Scroll. Mortis and Os Effectors are dedicated to fashioning the greatest warriors of the Bone Reaper hosts. Even in the midst of battle, they can be found developing their craft, whether protecting their charges from harm or enhancing their lethal potential. The Mortis and Os Effector is your brand new hero, and it comes in at 120 points. It has a move of 5 inches, a save of 4+, plus, a bravery of 10, and 5 wounds. It has 1 melee profile and no shooting attack. The melee profile is the Os Effector Talons with a range of 1 inch, 3 attacks, hits on 3s, wounds on 3s, rend 1 for 2 damage. The Os Effector is a wizard and it can attempt to cast 1 spell in your hero phase and attempt to unbind 1 spell in the enemy hero phase. Refined creations in your hero phase, you can pick one friendly Gothazar Harvester, Mortec Crawler or Morgas unit, wholly within 12 inches of this unit, and pick one of the following augmentations to apply to that unit until your next hero phase. Now the same unit cannot benefit from this ability more than once per turn. The Os Effector Barbs will improve the Ren characteristic of that unit's melee weapons by one. Accelerator Calcification, the first wound or mortal wound caused to that unit in each phase is negated. Or the Enhanced Claw Span, if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a missile weapon by this unit is a 6, that attack scores 2 hits on the target instead of 1. Make a wound roll and a save roll for each hit. 
Its War Scroll spell is Empower Ossification. It's a spell with a casting value of 5 and a range of 24. If successfully cast, the caster can pick up to three different Gothazar Harvesters, Mortec Crawlers, or Morgas units with any combination that is wholly within range to benefit from that Refined Creations ability instead of one that's wholly within 12 inches. So that's that three different abilities you can choose from. Now, the Mortison Ossifector is not a unique hero, so you can take multiples of them. And the keywords are Death, Ossiarch, Bone Reapers, Hero, Wizard, Mortison, and Ossifector. While we're talking about Mortisons, let's look at the rest of them, starting with the Soul Mason. The Soul Mason save has gone from 5 plus to a 4 plus save, which is great. The Soul Mason Staff now hits on 3s and does damage 2. It used to hit on 4s and do damage D3. The Ossified Claws now hit on 3, so it's also improved. There's a change in Soul Guide, and it's a spell with a casting value of 6 and a range of 24. If successfully cast, pick one friendly Mortec Guard or Kavalos Death Rider unit wholly within range and visible to the caster. Add one to the wound rolls for attack made by melee weapons by that unit until your next hero phase so a plus one to wound is a nice boost but it is locked to your mortec guard and your cavalos death riders now the mortison soul mason also now knows the entire obr spell law with the mortison soul reaper the soul reaper scythe is now ren minus two it used to only be ren minus one the Soul Reaper ability has changed, and each time this unit fights, you can say that it will unleash its Reaping Strike. If you do so, add 2 to the attack characteristic of this unit's melee weapons until the end of that phase, but this unit can only target enemy units that have 5 or more models. Now, This used to be a reroll hits if it had 5 or more models. There's also been a change in Soul Blast. It's a spell with a casting value of 6 and a range of 12. If successfully cast at the start of any one phase before your next hero phase, you can pick one enemy unit within range and visible to the caster. Now that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If that unit is within 3 inches of the caster, it suffers 3 mortal wounds instead of the D3. This is a similar spell to what you used to have, but the casting value got easier, the range got shorter, and there's no failure point. The old spell, you had to roll a dice, and on a roll of a one, nothing happened, um, but now you get much more benefit. Uh, it did lose the Deathly Touch ability, which used to trigger some mortal wounds on sixes to hit. The Mortison Bone Shaper had some changes in the Ossified Talons. It's now 3 attacks, 3 plus to wound, Ren minus 1 for 2 damage. It's improved a little bit. It used to only have 2 attacks, and it used to wound on 4s with no rend and 1 damage. The Bone Shaper ability is basically the same as the Mortark of Sacrament Necropolis, but only one unit, and it's a 6-inch range. Um, the other two, both uh, Catacross and Arcan the Black, have a range of 24. You can still heal three wounds or bring back three wounds worth of models, or on a three plus, bring back a Stalker or an Immortus Guard. And finally, Shardstorm now deals mortal wounds on five. Uh, it still has the same casting value and range. Uh, it's just now doing them on five plus instead of being on six as what it used to be. So a much improved horde killer now that Gits and Beasts of Chaos and likely zombies and other things are hitting the board. Next up with your Mortec Guard, you've seen some changes with the Natterite Spears. They now hit on fours and rend minus one. They used to hit on threes, but no rend. The Soul Cleaver Great Blade now wounds on four pluses and does two damage. Uh, it's gotten a little bit harder. It used to be on threes, but it used to only do one damage. The other change, which I think is a quite an interesting one, is the Shield Wall. And you can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. The command can only be issued by the unit's Mortec Hecatos, and this unit must receive the command. Now you get to ignore modifiers both positive and negative to save rolls for attacks that target this unit. This used to be reroll saves, and if you use this command ability, it means that you're going to be able to ignore rend, but at the same time as well, you won't benefit from Mystic Shield or Cover. Obviously, you can't use all that defense because it, com it competes with the same timing of this particular command ability. 
but it essentially will make you Nighthorn in regards to just not being uh, worried about Rend or modifiers. So, and if you don't want to do it and you want to save stack, well, you don't issue this command. With your Immortus Guard, the Soulbound Protectors has had a language change, but it's essentially the same rule, so I won't replay it here. They have gained an extra wound, so they used to be four wound characteristic, they're now five wounds. Uh, the Dread Halberd has changed, it's now three attacks, it used to only have two attacks. There's been a change in the Crushing Assault, and you can use this command ability once per battle after this unit has fought for the first time in the combat phase. The command can only be issued by a model in this unit, and this unit must receive the command. This unit can fight for a second time in that phase, and the strike last effect applies to that unit when they fight for a second time. It's now only once per battle, and it doesn't force you to only use it on your Natterite shield, because guess what? The Natterite shield profile is now gone. It was a meh attack, but the halberds have gotten better, which is a great news. But you've also lost deadly combination as well. With the Necropolis Stalkers, they also have gained an extra wound, so they're now on five wounds each. They used to be four. There's been a couple of changes on the weapons profile. The Dread Falchions is now a three inch range and a three plus to hit. It was range one and a four plus to hit. The Spirit Blades is now four attacks and Ren minus two. You did lose an attack, but you have gained an extra point in Rend. With your Quadrach aspects, your options are now plus one to hit rolls, plus one to save rolls, plus one to wound rolls, or plus one damage. You did lose the improved Ren from Precision aspects, but you've already included that kind of in your Dread Falchion. So it was formerly reroll, hit, save, or wounds. We've talked about rerolls. They're disappearing. No surprises that rerolls have turned into a plus one hit, wound, save, damage. The other change is in Hunt and Kill. You can use this command ability in your hero phase. The command can only be issued by a model in this unit, and the unit must receive this command. Until your next hero phase, this unit can run and charge in the same turn. In addition, until your next hero phase, models in this unit can pass across terrain features in the same manner as models that can fly. This used to be reroll, run, and charge roll, so I would argue this is better, although it's no longer at the start of the hero phase, which is again a nice little boost. Next up is your Mortec Crawler, and there's been some changes in the Dread Catapult. The Cauldron of Torment and the Cursed Steel attack is no longer once per battle. Don't get too excited. Let's look at the rules in a second. The Cauldron of Torment is a range between 6 to 18. It's 2d6 attacks, hits on 3s, wounds on 3s, no rend for 2 damage. Uh, the Necrotic Skulls is a range of 6 to 24 inch range. Four attacks, hits on threes, wounds on threes, Ren one for two. Cursed Steel has a range of six to 36. It's one attack, hits on twos, wounds on threes, Ren two for D3 plus three damage. There is a lot of fiddly differences across the profile, but the most noticeable ones for me was the range going down on most of the attacks. I think they all used to be 36 inch range. Some of them are now 18, some of them are 24, but there has been some big boosts in the attack when it comes to the cauldron and the sp skulls from a profile point of view. It did lose its damage table, so it's now a static profile. Previously, the three different attacks were tied to the damage table and would vary depending on how much it had taken damage over the course of the game. Now it's just a flat profile. The Cauldron of Torment ability has been removed. The Steel Curse ability has been removed. I know a few of you will be sad with this ability being lost because uh, there's been times, for example, a friend of mine rolled a 12 on the Cursed Steel to auto-slay my Celestial Hurricanum. So those little spike gambling pieces are gone, but you have gained an ability called the Deathly Barrage. After this unit shoots, roll a dice for each enemy unit that was targeted by this unit's shooting attacks in that phase. Add two to the roll if this unit was targeted by all of the unit's attacks in that phase. On a 5 plus or a 3 plus if you targeted the same unit with all your attacks, the strike last effect applies to that unit until the end of that turn. Now this is a great little combination piece that will support your wave of charges and really maximize the damage output. 
Yggothasar Harvester also lost the damage table, which used to affect its weapons profiles. Again, it's now a static number. The Death Head Maw is a range 16 attack. The Sickles and Bludgeon profile has merged. It's now range of 1 inch. 6 attacks, hits on 3s, wounds on 3s, Ren 2 for 2 damage. The Hooves and Tails are now wounding on 3+. There's been a change with Bone Harvest and roll a dice each time a slain model within 6 inches of this unit is removed from play. If the slain model is in range of one or more friendly unit with this ability, let's say two Gothazar Harvesters, you would have to pick which unit is using the ability. On a 4+, plus, you can pick one friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit within 6 inches of this unit and one of three things are going to happen. If the slain model has a wound characteristic of 4 or less, you can heal one wound allocated to the unit you picked. If the slain model has a wounds characteristic of five or more, you can heal up to three wounds allocated to the unit that you picked. If no wounds have been allocated to the unit you pick, you can return a number of slain models to it that has a combined wounds characteristic of equal to or less than the number of wounds you could have healed. Now, it did lose the Soul Crusher Bludgeons and Soul Cleaver Sickle abilities, which used to either trigger mortals on sixes or plus one to hit. Your Morgas Archai have had a move increase, and it's now moved from a nine inch to a 10 inch move. Uh, there's been a change in the Heralds of the Accursed Ones. Enemy units cannot receive commands while they're within three inches of a friendly unit with this ability. It did lose the Ebon Wrought Armor, which used to give the unit a 5-up ward, but before you get too far ahead of yourself, it did gain the Necromantic Custodians. Now, this unit gets a ward of 5+, plus if it's wholly within 12 inches of a friendly Ossiark Bone Reaper hero. It did also gain the Grim Opponents, and if you make an unmodified charge roll of an 8+, plus for this unit, the Strike First effect applies to this unit until the end of that turn. Next up is your Morgas Harbinger, and you also have a move of 10 inches. It used to be 9. Uh, the Herald of the Accursed One is the same as the Morgast Archai. You've also gained the Grim Opponents, again, same as the Morgast Archai. You did lose a rule that I used to really enjoy, the Harbinger of Death, which used to give you a 3d6 charge. Thoughts and prayers, you'll miss that one. I, I certainly will. But you have gained a rule called On Wings of Malice. During deployment, instead of setting up this unit on the battlefield, you can place it to one side and say it is soaring above the battlefield as a reserve unit. If you do so, at the end of your movement phase, you can set up this unit on the battlefield more than 9 inches from all enemy units. Next up is the Mir Kanan, and there has been a save characteristic improvement. It's now a 3 plus save, and you've gained a couple of extra wounds. It's now on 8 wounds. The Soul Reaper Axe is 2 inch range, 5 attacks, uh, which is also a boost. It used to be range 1 and 4 attacks. It did lose a rule called the Executioner's Strike, but it did gain the Bone Tithe. This unit has a tithe score that starts at zero at the start of the battle. Each time an enemy model is slain by this unit's attacks, increase the unit's tithe score by one. If that slain model has a wounds characteristic of four or more, increase this unit's tithe score by two instead of one. Now at the start of your hero phase, if this unit has a tithe score of one or more, you can reduce the tithe score by one, but if you do so, you can pick one of the following effects. Built for War, you get to pick one friendly Kanan's Reaper unit that is wholly within six inches of this unit. Now you can return up to three slain models in that unit. The alternative one is Invigorated, and until your next hero phase, add one to the attack characteristic of melee weapons used by this unit and by friendly Kanan's Reaper's units that are wholly within six inches of this unit. You've also gained the Dire Ultimatum, which is a spell with a casting value of 4 and a range of 3. If successfully cast, pick one enemy unit within range and visible to the caster. Until your next hero phase, any attacks made with melee weapons by that unit must target this unit. Now the range of this spell it must be measured from the caster, even if the ability would allow it to measure it from somewhere else. While Kanan's Reapers has had a movement characteristic change, it's gone up to 5-inch move and 2 wounds. 
There has been some minor weapons adjustments. I think most noticeably the bow is now two attacks. The halberd is now Ren minus two, and both the Great Blade and the Halberd both do two damage. No surprise, the Natterite Shield attack has disappeared. It has gained a rule called Dark Efficiency, and if a friendly Mirkanen is within three inches of this unit, before you allocate a wound or mortal wound to that hero, or instead of making a ward roll for a wound or mortal wound that would be allocated to that hero, roll the dice. On a 2+, plus, that wound or mortal wound is allocated to this unit instead of mere Kanan, and it cannot be negated. The other rule that is gained is the Tithe Reapers, and each model in this unit will count as three models for the purpose of controlling objectives. Finally, we do have your Endless Spells, and there's been a couple of changes, not a huge amount. While the Nightmare Predator had the most... Uh, its summoning value has changed. It's now a, a summoning value of 5 and a range of 12. It used to be a casting value of 7 and a range of 6. So I guess improvement on both of those ends. There's an interesting rule change here that I've never seen before. And a wizard in a garrison cannot attempt to summon this endless spell. And if this endless spell is summoned, the wizard that summoned it cannot join a garrison until this endless spell is removed from play. It is predatory and it can move up to 8 inches. That used to be a random roll of 2d6. Uh, it has had a change in the Death Incarnate rule where after this Endless spell has moved, roll a dice for each unit that has had any models passed across it. On a 2+, plus, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. Then the commanding player can pick one unit within 1 inch of this Endless spell and roll a dice. On a roll of 1, nothing happens. On a 2 to a 5, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. On a 6, that unit suffers D6 mortal wounds. Now, this ability has no effect on Ossiarch Bone Reaper units. This used to do damage to units when they were within 3 inches of it, but the large damage would happen when you targeted this unit that would be a prey unit, um, but it's no longer around because it was tied to a rule called Perpetual Hunter, and as you can see here on the screen, that Perpetual Hunter rule is no longer on the War Scroll. The Soul Stealer Carrion has had a couple of changes. The casting value has slightly reduced from 7 down to 6. It did lose the Soul Thief and the Second Sight ability, but it gained the Aviarch Sentry rule where models with a wounds characteristic of 1 or 2 that are within 6 inches of this Endless Spell cannot contest objectives. That's hot. This ability has no effect on Ossiarch Bone Reaper units. The Bone Tithe Shriekers had one change, and that's in No Escape. Subtract one from Ward Rolls for units within 12 inches of this Endless Spell, and this ability has no effect on Ossiarch Bone Reaper units. So there are plenty of War Scroll changes, and it makes sense that points are going to be moving around. You saw some points discounts in the Kavalos Death Riders and the Soul Stealer Carrion. They both went down 10 points. But as you can see here on the screen, there is a lot of red. The Gothazar Harvester, Catacross, Mortec Guard, and the Mortison Bone Shaper went up 10 points. The Liege Kavalos and the Mortison Soul Reapers went up 20 points. Arken the Black and Volk Mortison went up 30 points. Arch Kavalos Xantos and the Mortison Soul Mason went up 40 points. The Immortus Guard and the Necropolis Stalkers went up 50 points. Nagash went up 65 points. Mirakanan and his friends, as well as both versions of the Morgast, went up 80 points. Your new Mortison Os Effector is 120 points. And I'm really sorry to say here, folks, that you made no friends in this new Battle Tome and you continue to have no ally options. Your other consideration is battle line options and your Mortec Guard and your Kavalos Death Riders will always be battle line in Ossiarch Bone Reapers regardless of the sub-faction that you choose. While your Morgas Harbingers and your Morgas Archai will be battle line if you include Nagash or Arcan. While your Necropolis Stalkers and your Immortus Guard are battle line if your General has the Mortison keyword. So there's been plenty of changes in Ossiag Bone Reapers, and I think overall it's a net positive. On the surface, it seems like they want you to build more of a mixed arms force that includes multiple different units rather than just spamming a core combination like all the Mortec Guard or all the Murder Ponies. 
There are incentives to take more tech crawlers. And depending on how you build your list, there's obviously other little units that have had a bit of a glow up. There has been a bunch of improvements. Nagash got a ward save. You've gained access to the universal command abilities like rally, redeploy, all that attack, as well as those extra Ossiarch commands. The Mortec Guard essentially become ethereal with a shield wall command ability that will make you that four up unmodifiable save. But I guess if you want to save stack, it's up to you. Just don't turn that on. The new War Scroll Battalion is quite good. It's very flexible in regards to how you can build a one drop, though there is some interesting restrictions that I wonder if we're going to see on more War Scrolls in the future. And there's a lot of regeneration options in the army to even bring back things like your guard and your stalkers, which I don't think you could bring back in the olden days. And hey, they even gained an extra wound. They're now on five wounds each to make them around a little longer. But it wasn't all sunshines and rainbows. I think some players are going to be a little bit upset with the catapult losing those special attacks that it used to have. There is a lot of command points that for the tactically minded, they're going to really love. But for someone with less experience, it might be a little bit overwhelming with the sheer amount of options that you have to where you spend your command points. But hopefully you pick up over time when to use them and the most impactful ones. The Bone Tide Nexus getting impassable is a very interesting move for me. And I'm not quite sure if I agree with it just because of the sheer size of the Bone Tide Nexus. I can see that being a real pain in the backside on the table. There obviously was a lot of points increases, and I mentioned the grand strategies didn't really sing out to me. They seem weak, and maybe there isn't a lot of strong artifact choices for my liking anyway. But I think overall, when I look at the book and I think about what has happened to the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, I do believe this is a net positive. I think you've got some really much needed changes, things that you really wanted, especially being able to play with, again, rally, redeploy, all of the commands that we can use in every other faction that wasn't you. Just being able to use the universal commands alone makes this book stronger. But look, that's enough from me because you know that I'm going to go much deeper into the faction with some experienced players in the near future. But in the meantime, I want to hear from you. What do you think about this book and how do you see it changing your way you play in the armies that you run? Let me know in the comments section what you're thinking. Has there been any war scrolls that you have seen that has had a real glow up? Maybe some units that you used to use a lot that now might be put away for the side because they've had some changes. Again, let me know in the comments section. I'd be curious to hear from you. Thanks for hanging around until the end. I hope you enjoyed that video and you walked away with a few new ideas. Now, if you did, I would love it if you pressed like on the video as well as left me a comment with your thoughts. The conversation will continue over on Discord and the link is down below in the episode description. I also want to give a massive shout out to the AOS Coach patrons and YouTube members who are supporting the channel and the growth that you're seeing here. So cheers, you are all bloody legends. And until next time, don't roll a double one on a spell cast.